Welcome to Bonehead Weekly. How are you all? I Fuck mean, you. I mean, not as bad as Chad, evidently, because at least I can cook up some decorum for the dinner table. Yeah, cook the shit out of that fucking Wait, you, decorum. You got, you got food? Why well, don't I have any food? You because stole, you're poor. <laughs> that, and you stole my weed, and you ate all my food. <laughs> the last episode, you said you're going to come take marijuana away from me. Or was it two episodes ago? I don't know. I get confused. And and, and I did. I don't remember that at all. But I, I didn't. Did again, I, he, um, he did. He did. He did say it. Um. So hey, Chad. I I didn't get to ask you before. That's a really nice phone holder. I got some. Ow! Did he? Did this the bear attack him? The, if the, you're listening know. to this and not seeing it on video, you have no idea. But I think a bear attacked him. So real quick, this should come out this weekend. And speaking of Scarefest, I want to give one last plug to, hey, come see us. We're actually going to have a guest on Scarefest. Uh, Adrian's working on it. We're not, can't say who it is yet because actually we don't know. She's she's reached out to a couple people. So six o'clock, Bonehead Weekly, live Scarefest Saturday night. Come out and see us, okay? Just my plug. Plug, plug. Plug, plug. Do you like Salem's Lot? I haven't finished it. Oh, okay. It's still better than the... Did you watch the remake? Or you know you were going to watch the first one? I'm watching the... I got to finish the original before I watch the remake. I won't... I will never watch in a remake before I watch the original. It's hard to call it a remake because it's basically... It changes a little bit and it's more the book, but the miniseries is kind of a lot like the book. So it, mm -hmm. does that make sense? It's hard yeah. to call it... Yeah, I, I, I keep calling it a remake, but technically it's not. It's not a terrible movie. I just think they missed so many opportunities in it. Just, I got to the point, uh, I got to the point on uh, Salem's Lot where, yeah, I got to remember it's a mini series mm -hmm. and there's just nothing going on yet. And they're like, oh, you didn't get to where uh, I got to Gregory, I got to Gregory Peck giving uh, the guy who masturbated in theaters. What are you talking? Gregory Peck's not in Salem's Lot. Greg Mason. James Mason. <laughs> James, Ma James Mason. James yes, Mason. Yes, I'm here. Where he's given the, 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 the one guy from uh from uh all the uh best in show movies and uh who got caught masturbating. Before he died. Before he died. Um, Not after he was dead, because that would have been really difficult. Well, yeah, the miniseries explores the love affairs and whatnot throughout well, no, the film. I got to the point where he's giving him in the instructions about the delivery of... Oh, you haven't the, got to the good part yet. No, I haven't got... That's why I'm saying it's taking forever. And it, was just, it just got too late, so I had to turn it off. So and yeah, it's, was, it, it's still a miniseries, and it's still soap opera-ish, but it's still superior to the new one. Yeah. So oh. I, I'm just... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to finish it. Who wants I, to... Sorry, who wants to introduce our topic this week? Well, it's James's topic, so I say James. I say fuck James, since you said fuck me earlier. Oh, which is not well. a very good comeback to you, since I just moved it on to James. I uh, know it, it hurt so badly. The fucking is going to James. James, deliver us the fucking. It hurt so badly. So you're saying it was bad at hurting? Grammar it hurt matters. My, it hurt my feelings that you did. I was like, you. John Claude Van Damme, Death Warrant, Double Impact, Nowhere to Run. His best movie has Rob Schneider in it, and that's the end of this conversation. Oh my God. Oh no, his best movie doesn't even have Rob Schneider in it. His best movie his has movie. Daniel uh, Simpson, whatever. He has D Day in it. I can't remember the actor's name. Is it? Uh, no, uh, the I'm best top. movie, his, probably his best movie is JCVD. Oh, that's his best performance, but that's actually performance. Movie slightly boring in parts what? time cop is his best movie yeah but time um, hold on let me well, let me just say things controversially to see if we can get people to comment time cop would have to stand on a chair to kiss demolition man's butt now don't get me wrong john claude van damme is an additional in demolition no man. i'm saying it's it's a pale imitation of demolition man oh no don't it's get not. me wrong i love schwarzenegger i love stallone i love their films but I just had a soft spot for all Van Damme films when I was a younger. You know what wasn't soft? His ass. No. Mm -mm. Kickboxer, blood sport. Oh, my God. And do you all remember? Were you all with me when Lance Henriksen was talking about working with him on that? He's so awesome. And he so ate up the scenery in that movie. Well, he has to. He's the only good actor in it. Uh, no. Who? 
what's his name? Uh, the That's mummy. That's a great help. Thank you, Mr. Chekhov. Arnold Vosloo? Yeah, he was good in that movie. I don't remember. I just remember Lance Hendrickson turning around, doing his impersonation of Jean-Claude Van Damme on the Scarefest stage going, <laughs> how's my butt light? <laughs> <laughs> you all, yeah. Were you all with me when he did that? No, it, it, I wasn't. It with happened. You. It happened. No, but here's my entire thing. Do you think that's our problem? Do you uh, we think have lots reason, of problems. But do you think one of our problems is that we would have went further in life if we would have had proper butt lighting? No, no. I think our problem is that we'd have went further in life if we'd been more narcissistic. Well, Joe, <laughs> as as a good friend of mine introduced to me, and I have since used it several times. I can't have a big ego. I'm too good for that. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard. I've heard you say that before, actually. Well, that's because I have to keep repeating it to you because you keep forgetting. Like a poor marksman, <laughs> I keep missing my yeah, keep missing the target. Yes. yes. So, so anyway, am I supposed to introduce this topic or not? Sure, it'd be sweet this? as honey, you son of a bitch. Oh. Well, they do call me sugar. Uh, that's for one person. Anyway, Ain't nobody uh, calls you sugar, baby. Jake, baby cakes. Ba oh, see now that's a problem. You're sweet, I don't even... sweet. Speaking of sugar, how are your nipples? Those luscious nipples. I worry about you. I've been I've been mean to talk to you. <laughs> My lawyer says I'm not supposed to. And who was anyway. the other guy who loved your luscious nipples by the name of David? Yep, yep. It's that statue. He just keeps molesting me. Anyway, um, so gentlemen, as this obviously the conversation has proven, we have been called uh, geeks. We have been called nerds. Not to my face. Um, I'm sorry, Joe. Up here, look at me. Look at me now. I can't geek. <laughs> I just want to chat. Look at them. They are meant to be flicked and twisted and pinched. Are you still talking about me or? <laughs> No, <laughs> I didn't think so. Who are you oh with, God. right? Now? <laughs> I don't know. I'm sober. I'm just having a good time. I'm, I'm past tired and was just in a good mood. Sorry. Oh no, no. Uh, yeah, so let's anyway. let's ru let's ruin that, James, real quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep talking, James. It, it will yeah. happen. Hold on. Let me do what I always do when I speak for too long and make everybody sad. Um, no. So, gentlemen, we we have been called these things, but. One of the things that really is relevant is there's there's a lot of archetypes, if you will, in films, in novels, in comics and video games, all pop culture things that we've talked about. And I think it's really important that we actually say one of the most important ones is the nerd. Nerds in pop culture get stuff done. They drive yeah. stories. They change the outcomes of things. And so... You know, as we think about episodes for, I don't know, what are we, episode 842 now? I don't know. I think this is 344 or 45. Okay. Good God. Uh, I, th I know. <laughs> you, you didn't realize imagine? it was that many? No. Can are you, you serious? Uh, no, I didn't realize it was that many. Well, dude, here, it's it's a weekly, it's an almost <laughs> weekly show. Seven years, Chad. And we're seven years in. I don't know how you math, or if you don't math. I know you view numbers as made-up scribblings, but... <laughs> Made up scribblings is the name of my garage band. Hold on, math. So Frankfurt yeah, this is, is the capital of Kentucky. Sacramento. See, I can know math. 345, uh, actually. This Sacramento is, is the capital of California. Dude, if you don't sing it like the Animaniacs, I don't care. 345. Anyway, so so I thought, you know, again, I think it's an important thing. We need to do an episode about how important. Important, important to us. Important. There it they is. They like to be called impotent. That's even more than important. <laughs> and hillbillies like to be called sons of the soil, but it ain't going to happen now, is it? Anyway. I've never met one that does, but sure. <laughs> anyway, uh, so this is an episode where we're going to talk about some of our favorite nerds from popular culture, be it books, be it movies, be it television series, be it comic books, be it whatever sort of media Chad has that nobody else has. I assume some sort of Nickelodeon rotating sphere thing. I don't know what he's got over there. Oh man. There's so many <laughs> Nickelodeon rotating sphere things. <laughs> I have one from Nickelodeon. <laughs> What? Well, I mean, I was talking an actual Nickelodeon, but sure, sure. So <laughs> that's what we're going to do. Do you all want me to kick us off? Because I actually had one where I'm like, ah, you know, five years ago, it wouldn't have been on my list, but I was like, oh, I got to talk about it now. I right. want you to kick me so hard. Oh, I want to kick you so hard. Gentlemen, I think if you're into pop culture, recent, more recent pop culture, it's not recent, recent now, but if you enjoy books, and I should have 
planned ahead and not had I'm, I've got my a stack of books under it. and the book series that he's in is actually holding up my desktop right now or my laptop um but I think usually a, a nerd in pop culture is somebody that's going to you know be weaker but is also going to be somebody that com- comes through when needed yeah um you know they're going to be often viewed as a disappointment to their family until they're needed or something like that and I couldn't uh, as I, I even after I pitched this, I'm like, oh yeah, no, he's where I have to start. I think you have to talk about Sam Tarley from yeah. Game of Thrones. Yeah, that's a great think, nerd. Yeah, I think I mean all he wants to do is study his books. Like he mm-hmm. is is set, and if he could on if he could do what his father wanted, he's going to inherit a title. He's going, but he wants to go be a master and read books. Mm-hmm. More or less in this monastery. It's not a monastery. I know. I know Game of Thrones fans, uh, Song of Fire and Ice fans. Please don't attack me. But I mean, for the purpose of our, our conversation, Meister. He wants to be. Is it a Meister? Yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. A Meister. A Meister. Meister. He, he wants to be a Meister. He wants to go and say these books. He wants to look at obscure data that has has what most people believe no relevance to the time and matter of fact even the other maesters say you know the, the, this data this information has to stay here it should not leave here it's just all theoretical and his his bravest moments in some way are saying no no we need to get this information from here to here and so yeah. i think he's just a great example of a nerd that the book and the uh, the books and the show are are different, but in both of them, he kind of serves this purpose. Um, and and his his moments of heroism are accidental in the beginning, but at the end, he really did. In in both settings, he really does come through to alter the course of how this is going to work and how the how these events are going to unfold. And while we're still waiting on the next book, Mister R R Martin. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that'll make him do it. He's going to be tuned in going, wonder what the boneheads have got going oh, on. Oh, holy got shit, it. I forgot all about that. Thank you, Jane. I, I didn't know I had stopped writing halfway through. Son Damn it. No, it's Cold? okay. If he dies, Robert Jordan will finish it for him. Don't tell me otherwise. I need to think that Robert Jordan's still out there. Um, that's, Blessed that's for, be the cocaine. That That's for three, three people. But no, so I think Samuel Tarley is a great way to kick off our nerd conversation. I mean, there's, there's ones that predate him. And all that, but it's 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 just he's an example of a textbook nerd in popular culture that that people will know. And so I had to start with him. All right, do you want me to go next or Chad? I don't care. I said it's not my Chad? show, Joe. Yes, it <laughs> is go. our show. Well, it's I'll not go. just mine. So my first nerd is the star of this movie, Daryl Walker, which Texas you- Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> no, you probably know him by his yeah. alter ego, Blank Man. <laughs> what was the robot, the shitty robot's name? J5. Okay. I couldn't remember. <laughs> how could you not? How could you forget J5? I did not care for the Blank Man upon initial viewing in the 90s, is probably <laughs> the reason. Oh. Uh, I have to be one of the few people who owns a, a, a an original theatrical movie release poster of Blank Man. I may enjoy that more now than I did then. I want no, you won't. Don't even bother. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Once again, Chad defends the film so effectively. Don't I do just know it. Joe. Don't I just know Joe. He <laughs> will just go. When will this have, when when does this get funny? That'll be the text I get from Joe. Listen, well, if, it's a if, good question. When will it get funny? If we've uh, learned anything, if it's not Skadoo, Joe Lewis doesn't care. I did enjoy the shit out of Skadoo. <laughs> Why did they? Do, yeah. Why did we they all three enjoyed the shit out of Skadoo yeah. more than we should? But I think it's just because more we we're did. supposed to. As much as we watch films, it's probably one of the few films with all three of us in a movie watching that movie we weren't sure what's going to happen next i had no, no clue what was going to happen next and jackie gleason gleason jackie gleason had me in stitches in that first 15 minutes yeah all oh, that racism oh it's just <laughs> terrible but so funny oh my god oh why do they the... call this movie skidoo 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 skidoo, skidoo. Oh, it's so bad god 
<laughs> and by the way, any of our listeners, if you want to know what Skidoo is, it's considered one of the worst movies of all time. With one of the best casts. It's one of the best casts. Isn't it Groucho Mark's last film? His last, yeah, uh, his last theatrical film. Yes. Last, last theatrical th- film. He, he did some appearances after that, but yeah. Directed it's... by the great Otto Priminger. Otto Priminger. No slouch. Yeah. It is insanely just off the wall, nonsensical. You can watch it for free on YouTube. Go check it out for just sheer insanity and for, for dancing garbage cans. And a, and a, and a hot air balloon. Yeah. So good. So good. <laughs> anyway, back to Johnny Five. So Blank Man. Yeah. If you're not familiar with Blank Man, it was a commercial flop. It is not considered good by any means. I love this film nonetheless. And uh, it, uh, what Blank Man is, it's it's Damon Wayans. He uh, plays this. Uh, it's in, It takes place in the projects. Uh, he's just this nerdy kid, nerdy man who lives with his, his grandmother and his brother. He just tinkers with inventions all day, making inventions out of trash. Um, and one day his mother, his, his, uh, his grandmother is killed and he decides to take his wacky inventions and become a superhero, uh, on with no budget. So he, his costume is he wears, uh, over, uh, underwear and a sock for a, for a face mask. And it's just him making a difference, even though he's nothing but a weak nerd. Well, and I love the fact, even the title, even yeah. his name comes from the fact that he goes, he, he goes blank. He goes blank during, during a, where he, where he saves a woman in an elevator. He just draws up, but he goes blank. So Is yeah, direct- it's directed by Mike Bender. Uh, yeah. Mike Bender did a really good show. I liked for HBO. It's like in that minds of men or something like that. And he directed another movie. We really, didn't he also direct Indian summer Chad? Yes. He directed Indian summer. Yeah. With one of Sam Raimi's best performances. Yeah, and also isn't Kevin Smith in that too? Uh, no, that's the other one. That's the uh, your uh, Kevin Pollock is in Indian Summer. Oh, I thought Kevin Smith was. Uh, yeah, okay, that's you're the thinking other about case. that other one with Jennifer Garland. Yeah, sorry, I got confused. Yes, uh, but yeah, uh, Blank Man. That is my 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 first nerd pick because he is the epitome. When you think of a nerd in film. He is the ultimate nerd, and I am. I am also counting Revenge of the Nerds. He, I think he he surpasses any nerd in Revenge of the Nerds, in my opinion. Well, that is that's that's a bold statement. There you go. Well, mine actually is a more recent film too, and it came out in nineteen uh, nineteen twenty. I was going to say mine's not recent. Mine's ninety four. Well, that's recent to me. That was just yesterday. So in twenty thirty years, Joe now. Well, fuck you. I'm not that old. So, Ooh, moving right. buddy. Yeah, well, I'm just as old as... Fuck you. <laughs> so, I want to talk about a movie that came out in 2019. Actually, I used to, before COVID, every once in a while, we'd get free movie tickets. And my son was really kid, it's young, and I would give away the tickets at a couple of things I belonged to. And it was this movie coming out, and I gave away the tickets, and then I didn't actually see the movie for almost probably another year. But it's 2019's Book Smart. And it's a movie about two young ladies who are just extreme nerds and nerds in the sense of smart. And they've spent this whole time. They're both getting into their dream schools, their best friends. And they realize that it's in the eve of their graduation. They ain't done shit. That's been fun for the last four years in high school. And it's about the night that happens. And it's directed by Olivia Wilde. And it's just a really well-made movie. It's funny. It hits all the just points as it's going. The two girls are hilarious. Uh, Caitlin Dever and Beanie Feldstein. It's got a really great uh, cameo, basically, by Jason Sudeikis, who at the time was with Olivia Wilde. That's his, that's her uh, daddy, baby daddy or whatever. And if you've never seen it, check out uh, Booksmart. I really enjoy it. It's about nerds. Just it was a holy shit. What have we done with our lives? What have we been doing studying us all this time? And then they try to do one night of debauchery and it all goes to hell. See, I I am one of the few that I was bored through that movie. I never did enjoy it. I know that I'm, I am 
one of the few. Yeah, it's really highly rated. Everybody small, loves that movie, and I was I just could not get into it. It was a small hit. It led to her doing some other stuff. I actually think she did a really good job, and I think the two girls were hilarious. That's James. Mine. James. Oh James. well, no. I, I, I are you still on the show, James? Are we still doing this? Is this um, thing on? Uh, gentlemen, I, I've got a favorite nerd, and I think the reason uh, he, I'm going to talk about the show, but I think the actor that plays him may be one of if if the film gods upon high in film Olympus needed to create a, a nerd use in popular culture as a nerd, I don't think they could do better than than the actor that plays this particular character. Um, and I, I think the, I think the reason is, is because he has all the greatest lines and he delivers them in such a nerdy way. And if you actually see the actor when he's doing things, cause he does a lot of panel shows and stuff now, he's just hilarious because I think, I don't know if he's really playing a character. I think he may actually be very close to the character. And I think the, the, roles the, the the role that he plays that I'm gonna talk about it's so perfect because it's somebody that can't function in society but it's hilarious to watch him try. Gentlemen, I'm talking about Maurice Ma uh, Moss from the IT crowd. You know, I Played still the, never watched the IT crowd. Never watched it. Oh man, it's I take take about two episodes to get into it. Cause it, it's got a rhythm. You gotta get into the rhythm and he is He's just hilarious because there's an entire scene where they change and it makes fun of civil service. It makes fun of IT personnel and all the stuff. Um, and his, his way of coping mechanism, one of the best episodes is, you know, he's trying to, to show that he can, uh, that he can relate to other people. And somebody comes in and is talking about sports, and he makes the you know comment. He goes, "Did you see that ludicrous display last night?" And the guy goes, "I know, right?" And rambles on, and then he leaves. And the other IT guy says to him, "Uh, you you watch that game? No, no. But if you just say things like, "Did you see that ludicrous display last night?" They assume you know, and will leave you alone. And there's a scene later in that same episode where finally they actually go, "Oh, since you." Love like it so much we got an extra ticket to the game come with us and he's sitting in the crowd and he goes they kicked the ball to that gentleman now they kicked it to another gentleman he seems happy to have it but that other team seems angry and it just goes on he has no way to function and my favorite episode I think is actually the second episode of the series a fire breaks out in the office and they have changed the it was uh, in England it's 999 not 911 and they changed it, though, because of political reasons. And it's now a 15-digit number, but he can't remember it. And so he decides that he'll just email civil service. And he actually takes the time to go, dear sir or madam. No, wait, that's too formal. As the fire gets bigger and bigger in the office, burning things. And then the fire extinguisher actually catches on fire. And he just can't, like, but he's like, no, no, I've got to send, it's got to be the right tone in my email. I've got to make sure I don't want to make them angry. I don't want and just as somebody with social anxiety, as somebody that you know has all these other issues, to see Maurice Moss be hilarious, but at the same time, actually be oddly believable, even though it's farcical, as a nerd. Uh, Richard, uh, is it Iodade? I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, just go with it. It's not like anybody's going to you know listen to this and then later turn us down for an interview. Because I can't pronounce things because I've only read them. I'm sorry, I don't run in your Hollywood circles. I'm poor. Anyway, um, no, no, it's it's just called. Perhaps disgusting. you should try pronouncing them instead of burning them. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I read. I don't even. There's words I mispronounce because I just read them. Anyway, uh, but Marisa uh, Moss, uh, the character Richard Aldey is the actor. It's just hilarious. And if you haven't watched it like these two, you all need to watch it. It's very British. It's hilarious, though. And when they tried to adapt it to American audiences, they brought him over because you can't have that show without him. And he is just perfect. And now I watch him doing panel shows in England, and he's hilarious. Um, so, yes, yes. Maurice Moss may be one of my favorite television nerds of all time coming from 
England. There you go. All right. My second one, I probably should have went first because there's two as far as I'm concerned. And I thought, Jane, is it your turn? Yep. I'm, I lost spots. Go, Obviously. Jane. We're obviously not counting nerds. Yeah, you're obviously or order not a, nerds. You're or... obviously not a fucking Dalmatian. I can tell you that much. See, now I'm just picturing a plantation. It's a spot joke. I'm, yeah, I'm trying. Yeah. yeah c- congratulations. Yeah, go fetch. I don't. I mean, you, there's a lot. You could have made a dish, you know, spots on the dishes. Cascade yeah. joke. You could I, don't, have I don't know that that works either. It might have got us a sponsorship, Joe. You think Dalmatians are going to Why don't you and your they horny baseball nothing. cap go? You know what this is? No. This one has a lot of memories for all three of us. Okay. It is the hickory crawled ads. Oh, yeah. Oh, I it does not look just, like a crawled ad. I thought you uh, were just celebrating the fact that you taught your crabs to play baseball. <laughs> I thought it was a devil with a shove of a baseball at somebody in their face. <laughs> well, that's just silly. It's much yeah. more logical than <laughs> Of all the shit that just was uttered, mine was the silliest. Yours, <laughs> yours just ludicrous. 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 Oh, God. So uh, my Keep second chug of that, James, that generic, generic Mountain Dew. My... This is all I've got. This and my uh, one of my other favorite moths left. Being weird is all I've got. That's all I've got. It's my style. Oh, James, how do you feel about the fact that now uh, Pepsi is officially no longer shortening Mountain in Mountain Dew? They are now officially spelling it out. Well, well they used to time. do that in the before four times. Now, if they bring back the hillbilly icon that originally was on it. No, they're not bringing him back. I don't think they will. No. I mean, for several different reasons. Now, yeah. I, Chad, this is true. One of my favorite generic versions was available at, um, I forget where it was. It, but it it was, uh, I mean, it wasn't like a Save-A-Lot brand, but it was literally called... Uh, Mountain uh, uh, Moonshot. They actually they just blatantly called it Moonshot, <laughs> and it was <laughs> just a Mountain Dew ripoff. And and it literally still it had its own hillbilly icon where he was sleeping next to an outhouse. I don't know why that never caught on nationally as an icon because you know when you reach for a beverage you're like no no give me the one with the hillbilly sleeping next yeah. to an outhouse. Oh, well, that's what I hey, want. Give me the drink that looks like urine with the guy. <laughs> that ain't mine. That's urine. Chat. Originally, it was meant to be blended with bourbon. I mean, that's what Mountain Dew was for. You're we supposed to blend it with bourbon. Yeah, and I tried that. It's nasty. I do. I don't want to do that in Mountain Dew. <laughs> oh, I just lost us. I just lost us a fan. We're down. Our viewership's cut in half. A fan. So my second pick, I had yes. to pick because his code name literally spells nerd. I mean, sorry, doesn't spell, but is the literal definition of nerd. Yes. Got to go with smart brother from undercover brother. That's a, that's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. You're not here for undercover lover. You must be here for yeah. undercover, undercover brother. brother. That, that's a movie that should have had like three sequels. Did you it know had there, one, right? There, there is There was a sequel in 2019 called Undercover Brother 2 with none of the cast. Yeah. And Undercover Brother was replaced with Michael J. White. No. It has a 3.4 star out of 10 on IMDb. No. I have no desire to watch this. Movie. Ain't watching that, that because shit. Because the first one is... Is classic. It's it cla- is, and everybody in it, if it's not your type of movie, it's not your type of movie, but everybody in that movie is at the top of their game for that type of movie. Right. Yeah, even Chris, even Chris Kazan. Yeah. yeah, as Mr. Feather. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even he is uh, he's that's the that and House on Haunted Hills are like his two best. Yeah. 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 It, everybody it is a straight parody and everybody is doing their part and playing the character that they're supposed to be playing the character the way they are for for full comedy. It is a wonderful film. And, and Chappelle's oh man, everybody's a good in that. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, and actually, speaking of Dave Chappelle, Chad, I, you actually made me think that the 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 couple scenes in that movie with um, uh, where he agrees with conspiracy brother, 
yeah. are hilarious to me because yeah. every time it's usually the most far far extreme thing that conspiracy brother Dave Chappelle could yeah. say, and he's like, "No, actually, he's 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 on." Like, yeah, those <laughs> scenes are great. So yes, yeah, great. And point. even Billy yeah. G. Williams as General Warren Bootwell when he gets uh, uh, when he gets under the drug and he's promoting fried chicken, phenomenal. Oh yeah, but no, um, Gary sorry, I just forgot about the plot. Yeah. <laughs> Gary, I want mine with extra mayonnaise. (laughs) Sorry, Gary. (laughs) I'm sorry, Chad. I'm gonna have to go back and watch it. I've got to go watch the motherfucking thing. He tries to sprint. He tries to spritz it with hot sauce. Hot sauce. sauce. The the, the watch. And actually, the entire scene where uh, is it Denise Richards and I'm forgetting who's the act. And they're fighting, and they're sort of cuss to them. They're like, I would sit on the couch. Yeah, white she devil and sister girl. (laughs) Oh my god. And 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 and, and Doogie Howser talking about the little pink nipples. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I know if you, ha- by the way, for our listeners, if you haven't seen Undercover Brother, none of this makes sense. We're randomly just sounding scenes, and and please watch Undercover Brother. It was a cla- It is a comedy classic that just slid underneath the radar, and people don't talk about that one either. Yeah, it don't nobody talks about it now. It didn't make a lot of money at the box office. And it's a damn shame because it is a masterpiece. It is a comedy masterpiece. Well, it's opinion. pretty good. It's a comedy masterpiece. It doesn't get a lot of that doesn't get a lot of play. But uh, Smart Brother was played by Gary Anthony Williams. He was he was the inventor of this uh secret organization um that was fighting the man. Oh my God! Why am I blanking on what the secret organization was called? But they were called the Brotherhood, basically. Yep. Um, uh, and he always he he ended up creating all the secret devices for Undercover Brother, including the uh the 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 watch that spritzed hot sauce so he could uh, eat a sandwich just doused with mayonnaise, platform shoes that extended so he could walk over uh, uh, gates at a golf course. I mean, he came up with everything. I mean, he was a phenomenal and he always had the best reactions uh, to anything that Undercover Brother did. Uh, So uh, I when I thought of nerds, honestly, when James came up with this topic, Smart Brother was actually the first one that came out of my mind. Um, And then when the list grew, I'm like, I was like, man, I can't believe Smart Brother was the first one that came up. When I when I made my my entire list, yeah, so, yeah. I, that's a good one. That's a good one. I, Yo, I wouldn't have came up with that one. Now you way, can go. Uh, sorry, uh, real quick. No, I can't. Joe, no. Let me interrupt fuck Joe. you. Do you fuck know what you. what what uh, the actor Horse that plays mouth. Smart Brother is? Gary Anthony Williams, who's done a ton of voiceover work for Disney and like Robot Chicken and everything. Else. But you know what he's done recently, Chad? Apropos mm-hmm. to other things that we've talked about on this show. The Night Court reboot. He plays one of the judges. Oh, does he? Yep. Judge Flobert. Yeah. I huh. stopped watching it. It's not a terrible show. I know Chad will watch it. It's not also great. It's it's. I think I just enjoy watching John Larroquette. Yeah, I have. It's just. It's not the same. It's still yeah, just it, a shitty sitcom. I, I am, one but of, it's not as bad. I as have officially else. entered, and I I'm usually one of these people who says I'll give something a chance. I have officially entered that old age where I just can't make myself do it. Yeah. The the old the old show meant way too much to me. I don't know. I'll be well I I I haven't watched it yet and it's not be, but it's not for that reason. It's I think it's honestly because I just haven't there's too time. much, man. There's yeah, that's much. the reason yeah, why I've not finished it is it because I just trying to fit a scarefest review in every week, get ready for the show, it just doesn't uh, happen. And so anyway, after we get a recording, I gotta ask you now. all something. But anyway, go ahead, Joe. He said something about his Vox mocking it. Vox Machnia is one of the best shows out in terms of fantasy. Dude, it it could it possibly be any better than what have I been watching? <laughs> so, for mine, we really would be doing us a disservice. And James, one, there's two really great earlier nerd movies. And I kind of thought you might do one of them, so I wasn't going to touch on it because you've talked about it before on here. But the one I'm going to talk about is holy crap i completely for i remember everybody in it but we're going to talk about professor julius and jerry lewis is the nutty professor from 1963 where he turns into buddy love it 
I it's a, probably one of those movies where I don't think people probably remember it. We're getting, I mean, it's been over, well, hold on. Yeah, it's been 61 years, right? Yeah. And that's three generations, I guess. So yeah. it's kind of tough. And I probably people are going to slowly in another decade forget about Eddie Murphy's, which is also a fantastic movie. They're both really good. Well, actually, the Eddie Murphy version is better. Mm -hmm. As a movie, it's more enjoyable and funnier. It's better. It's funnier. Yeah. It's yeah. funnier. Jerry Lewis is giving an absolute killer performance. The problem is, is that I don't know that it quite translates as him going to Buddy Love as well 60 years later as it did. It is one of the great nerd performances in movie history. Well, the French are going to come track you down and shoot you. Because I said it's one of the great performances of nerds of nerds in movie history. Well, or that, you, I, that you that you said Eddie Murphy's was better. Well, here's what I find interesting because I wanted to bring up both of them, but I wanted to mention Jerry Lewis because he started it. And Jerry Lewis was a writer, director. Jerry Lewis had a lot of control over his movies. Jerry Lewis was a very talented guy who was misogynist as hell, but that's beside the point. He was very very talented. But I've been watching a lot of or listening to when I had time. I haven't had time last two or three weeks. A lot of Eddie Murphy interviews because he's hilarious in there because Eddie Murphy's just fucking hilarious no matter what. And somebody said something about his best performance and he said, no, it's the Nutty Professor. And it was like, no, well, you know, the Oscars, it's the Nutty Professor. But it, it's the Nutty Professor. I walked around in some of that stuff and he said the same thing with coming to America and people didn't know it was me. And even if you take the makeup off, he's still doing all the voices. He's still doing, he's, I right. don't disagree with him. It probably is an Oscar winning performance, but we'd never give an Oscar to the nutty professor. Right. Because like, comedies don't get Oscars. They just don't. And I got to thinking about it because I was like, oh no, it's the one where he almost won for dream girls or, you know, it's a, uh, it's a uh, dino, the, the dino mine. <laughs> Yeah, Dolmite. I'm blanking. I'm blanking. Call me Dolmite, which is also Dolmite. another fantastic. Eddie Murphy's a wonderful actor. Right. Wonderful. You ever actor. see that Bowfinger? That's he's fantastic as a nerd in that, Jane. Yeah. Yep. Isn't he not? Yeah. He's he's fantastic. <laughs> the, he plays the, the, two different characters, and when I say two, those are two different people. Yeah, and the I reveal about how they're connected is hilarious. To, I mean, it's the way it works. Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah. So I know I'm getting off a tangent, but you're right. That's another great nerd character that he does. A and tangent? I just kept, what'd you say? A tangent? A tangent? Oh, did I say tangent? I meant to say yeah. tangent. Because okay. You're We're just idiot. making up words today. Whatever. You're the one with a devil crawl dad holding a nut. I, I, Why don't you bust your devil crawl dad nut? <laughs> The fact Which you is think a this sentence like a, I've never said before in my life. The fact that you think a baseball... It's got fucking horns on it from a distance. Those are antennae, and the fact that you look like... the That the, that a baseball looks like a nut means you need to eat more legumes. I don't think you understand any of what you just said. I think you're both wrong, and I think you should have a slide fight about it. <laughs> so... Jerry Lee... Jerry Lee Lewis. Jerry That's Lewis, what I need more brain damage, nutty professor, James. And second... Second, Eddie Murphy and the Nutty Professor, and it may very well be Eddie Murphy's best performance. Round three, ready to wrap it up, James. I'm going to go with one because I I love nerds. I know that's shocking because I is one, uh, but I love nerds. I was saying about this, and the reason this came up was growing up, my favorite character in most shows was always the bookish, nerdish person. And so, for instance, the original Star Trek, it's Scotty. And that scene in um, Trouble with Tribbles, where the episode where he gets, you know, the, the captain confines him to quarters and his response is, oh, good, I'll be able to catch up on my technical journals. I love that scene. I knew then that was my favorite character. Star uh, Scotty is still my favorite Star Trek character t to date. But all the other ones I really like are also the nerdy. I love Stamets from Discovery. I love the nerd characters. Um, and, and so Ninja Turtles... Uh, um, I, I wanted to be Michelangelo, but I love Donatello. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, I was thinking for this topic, I'm like, who is the nerd that I can end on that is, is a character that I absolutely adore, that quite frankly, I think we all adore, and I, I realized very quickly who it is. Because this is a movie with, with three nerds in it. 
and somehow he towers above them in his narrative. And it's Egon. Yeah. Egon Spengler. The rest of those characters. I thought you were taken. I'm about the one I'm going to yeah, do. Well, he just listed three. No, no, but to get the, to the, Egon, asshole, and that one of them was my pick. I, well, you, you can talk about it in detail because no, Egon I'll is. I'll go with one of my other ones. Egon is the ultimate example because, I mean, the rest. Uh, Ray's a nerd. Ray has all this knowledge, but if you line them up. Well, I think there's only two nerds. Well, I guess Mar- yeah. Moranis is kind of a nerd, but yeah, yeah. So I mean, but and and well, he's and, not a Ghostbuster. But, but I'm I'm talking about it throughout kind the of film. Is in part two. Yeah, and I'm talking about it throughout the film because you could argue Janine's a nerd. Yeah, I mean yeah. the way she it rambles on about stuff and all that stuff. And so, but Egon, when you need when you're trying to say who's the nerdiest, go, it's in that film. It it's not Egon. even close. Is he? That line I collect molds the sports. sports. Like it doesn't get any nerdier than that. And he had a slinky, but I straightened it. Straightened yeah. it. That's a big Twinkie. Uh I mean mm-hmm. it'd be a Twinkie this side. I mean, just And the yeah. other best lot nerd line he has in the whole movie. movie. <laughs> Sorry. As he's going after Peck. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but when every, he finally loses it. Everything about that character is nerdy and yet he works so well with everybody else like it's one of those things where i mean there's that entire exchange actually joe i'm glad you mentioned that that scene where he loses temper because he has that entire scene where um vickman says it's talking about him drilling a hole in it and he goes it would have worked if you hadn't stopped not me i mean he is in a film that's basically about nerds and th- because the entire scene where Ray says, you know, you've never worked in the private sector. They expect results because they're always used to working in academics. They're, they mm-hmm. are academics. I mean, even, and, and I know Vinkman's the coolest of the three, but the movie starts with him doing a nerdy test on people and cheating, but still doing a nerdy <laughs> test on people. Faulty science. I know yeah. that now. <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, this is a movie about nerds, but I, I think one of the reasons I love Ghostbusters, and I know we all love Ghostbusters, it's the thing movie we all three can agree on, but I think that it's the quintessential 80s film where the nerds are the rock stars. By the end of that film, it's the nerds that save New York City. Yeah, they do. And so I couldn't not talk about it because Egon is the king of the nerds. He designs all the equipment and all the sequels actually start to go. But matter of fact, actually, it's one of my favorite parts of Afterlife is when Winston goes through what they all were. And he kind of gives credit to Egon. He doesn't say it that way, but for being the king nerd. I mean, it's Egon was the brains. Yeah. Egon was, right, was the heart. Yeah. yeah. And and so they're all nerds, but they they come together really, really well. And it, it works out really well. So Egon is, as I was sitting here thinking about this, like Moss as a character from IT Crowd is hilarious. You know, Samwell is a phenomenal character uh, of, of a nerd in this dark fantasy world, but it's hard to out-nerd Egon. And and I, I had to end on Egon. I've got tons of honorable mentions, but I'll shut up. Before oh, we could do a whole you. other, I could do another episode. Yes, yeah, same here. So we uh, might. Why don't, you guys want to just do part two of this after sure, Sphere Fest? Sure. Instead of doing like honorable mentions, maybe maybe here here's the here's the deal. We'll tie this into Scare Fest. Okay, so we've got a panel at Scare Fest. Yeah. And if you attend our panel, and at some point over the weekend you want to audition and say why we should mention your name as the biggest nerd that we met at Scare Fest, you can come up to us and make that argument. That's and a we good will, idea. Yeah, and we will actually say, hey, we met the biggest nerd at Scarefest and share your name and why you felt you deserve to be the biggest nerd. And so you can be part of Biggest Nerds Episode 2 coming to you after Scarefest. That's a good idea. Sorry, Chad. No, you're fine. I'm just re I'm just re reorganizing my list because I'm gonna save the one that James stole for next episode. And I'm going to mention my my backup for this one. Yes. So my last pick, because James talked about Egon. Egon is what happens when a nerd does something good. 
he takes his his genius and makes inventions takes his science abilities and makes and puts it towards something for the better of mankind my nerd takes his genius and twists it and uses it for evil i of course have to talk about herbert west the it's reanimator one. it's a good one <laughs> and we've all met him <laughs> You know what I do love about it? speaking of we've all met him, we've met Jeffrey Combs, the actor yeah. that plays yes. him. And I was actually rewatching Lower Decks today, and I don't know if y'all have watched Lower Decks. I haven't seen he plays season. It, he plays well, it's he's in the earlier season where he plays the evil robot. Yeah. Uh, and, and and it's a joke, of course, because he has done every series of Star Trek since, you know, Deep Space Nine. And he, he actually he, says he, the next he, generation, right? He's in a yeah, next generation, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Holy has, shit, Chad! Did you hear that? Yeah, well, I, I always Star Trek the Trekkie. I, there's there's this meme going around around the Star Trek boards, uh, and, and what I skins. love about it is I love when he says pink skins. Oh, pink skins! Yeah, yeah. Shron is is uh, actually a matter of fact. Actually, he said in an interview recently that if if Paramount comes to him and says we want you to come back, his dream is to come back as an age Shron. Because he loved that character show so much, he just says, "Yeah, age me up in the makeup," and he goes, "Let me play that character again because that was some of the most fun." But there's a meme going around the Star Trek boards uh, where it's like the the Vince McMahon reaction, you know, thing that goes around, and and yeah, and it's um, you know, starring blah blah blah, and it's the, when he's on Deep Space Nine, and it's like Jeffrey Combs as Wayun, Jeffrey Combs as yeah. And then the episodes where he's playing both of them in the same episode, and that's the one where it's the absolute all. Yeah, that's uh, anyway. I'll shut up now. Please go ahead, Chad. No, it's whenever okay. you're ready. No. I just want to say, if it had been me, it'd be like, "When the fuck are you gonna shut up, you pie eating fat fuck?" That's not true. You don't this like is a crawl pies. You don't like fruit pies. Not fruit pies, no. That's because I'm nice. He is nice to me. Takes Herbert me West, the reanimator, he, he he made my list for obvious reasons. He's a nerd, and he just what he is is he's a he's a he's a medical student who comes up with this brilliant serum that brings the dead back to life, but he just can't quite do it correctly because they just come back wrong. They come back wrong. The soil's bad. I can't do it. Soil's bad up there. Yeah, I don't the know what accent you're doing. It's sour. The ground sour. sour. See, I can't. I can't. I can't. No, you've never, never could live in Maine. No. Um, but yeah, um, he, he would have disappointed just, Lily. And he just keeps doing it over and over again. He doesn't care about the repercussions. He just wants his science to work, and he doesn't care who's in his way, who he hurts the damage that he does. Unlike Egon. <laughs> yeah. No, um, I, I, and, I think that's, that's a very good point, Chad, because I think you've given us the two extreme or we've looked yeah. at the two extremes of nerd of nerds yeah. in film. Yeah. Because all nerds are obsessed. And I say right. that as a nerd, right? I'm I, professionally, I'm at my happiest in an archive looking at a document. Nobody's looked at in 80 years. It makes me happy. I'm discovering something that's been left behind. So I get that, but I think you're right. Yeah, because I mean, look, Egon, his devices, his his inventions leads to New York getting saved from complete no utter oblivion. Herbert West's invention leads to a woman getting ravaged by a severed head. And later Ravage on, me. later on, it leads to a, a mouse having to fence against a piece. Yeah, that's true. That's what true. what is that the third film? That is the third film, Beyond yeah. Reanimator. Beyond Reanimator, yeah. When are we going to get Beyond Reanimator? <laughs> Never. That's Never. an old mystery science too. When are we going to get Beyond Thunderdome? <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. But that that gentleman that I had to go uh, again. I'll say uh, it was between two. I'm kind of glad James mentioned my third pick because I wanted. To, I'm glad I got to end with Herbert West. Well, mine 
I, I and so we'll save it for the next one was going to be another classic one if James didn't use it. So I'm going to go with one from the 80s, and I'm both shocked and especially shocked that James didn't go with on this episode. How did you not talk about Doc Brown from Back to the Future? I no, he was on my list, and I'll be honest, the reason Egon won out in that argument because there's I agree with you to pick. I would pick Egon there, over Doc Brown it, too, but Doc Brown is probably that quintessential more that people see in their head. There's another one on my list that I'm surprised James didn't bring up. No, but, dude, I literally I, I I kid you not, when I started making a list of this and I have it typed out here, do you know how many names I came up with where I'm like I could talk about all of these? There's a ton. There's I could could I could have talked about twenty probably. Mm -hmm. Hundred and twenty six. Okay, I don't know 126. Oh, Jesus Christ, that I didn't high. go that deaf. Yeah, no. Yeah. That's that's my cartoon level list that I made. But I no, can't I, even I count didn't. that high. Doc Brown is number 17. <laughs> and that's I that's love, a, by the way, as you know, I have I have tons that, of action figures over hold here. On, I'm did Herbert West Did Herbert West make your list? Oddly enough, no, Chad. That's why I was like, oh, that's a good one. I oh. beat my list. Did Smart Brother make your list? No. 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 Hold no. on. Hold on. Did Blake, man? No, no, Stump Blank the Man did motherfucker. not make Blank Man, Blank, Blank Man didn't make nobody's list. No. Hmm. Back to Doc Brown. Christopher Lloyd delivers the most Christopher Lloyd performance of all time. I don't know. I mean, it's it's no. kind. I it's not. I would say Taxi, but I don't. A Jim and Taxi, but I don't think. I think. I mean, it's, I, he's always going to be known as Doc Brown. I would say that Back the to closest. The future. The the closest one, you're right, is is Reverend Jim from Taxi. Yeah. But even Reverend Jim from Taxi is like the only way I can compare Reverend Jim from Taxi is a stoner, more or less. I mean, he's because there's the entire scene where like the back of his apartment blows up and he's eating cereal and he just looks back and he goes back to eating cereal. And it's because there's nothing he could do. But Doc Brown's animated. Like he's going to jump around and scream and all that. You know, half of my house is gone. And so you're right. I think I think there's nobody, and I don't think there's anybody else that could play that role that way. No, and and he is a uh, what is the word? I don't know. He every once in a while, casting is so perfect. And Back to the Future is one of those. Uh, and and by, and Robert Zemeckis always says it's not. People call it a perfect movie. Tarantino called it a perfect movie. But he says it's not a perfect movie, but he says it's a perfect screenplay. And I don't disagree. I was re-watching it again the other day with my kid, and there are just beats. It Now, I don't have the same attachment to it that the other two boneheads do. I liked it as a kid, but I don't have a love for it like the other two do. But I do enjoy the movie. I, 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 well, I love the movie. I'm just not as attached. And I was re-watching it, and it is perfectly cast. I can't imagine. I know Eric Stoltz, but Michael J. It's just perfect. Everything about no. the casting is perfect. And the most perfect, and I know I'm going to get shot for this, I still think Marty and Michael J. Flox are like this, but I bet if there was a couple other people in the 80s who would have hit right at the same second, might have got away with it, who are you going to get to play Doc Brown other than Christopher Lloyd? Nobody. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, uh, gentlemen, I, mean, I can't, I can't think of anybody. I cannot, I can't. And even Christopher Walken has said, "I'm weird." Christopher Lloyd's the weird one. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, he and has I said think, it in interviews. Yeah, I, but and I Isn't think there I, stories like, like, like I forget who told the story, but there would be like stories where Christopher Lloyd would go to a party, and yeah. he would just he would grab his food and go sit at the steps while everybody would be at the party. It's I set forget. under the stairs and nobody set, knew he was there for hours and didn't yeah. finally say something, Chad. Is there, that what you're talking about? Yeah. I can't who's told that story? I a couple people have told that yeah. story. And I, I don't just, I don't think any of it's nefarious or no one dislikes him. He's just yeah. a different person. Yeah. No, I, I well, I, I think one of the things by the way, the uh, was at Comic Con they did the reunion of uh, the Adams family recently. I saw that. And yeah. so it's Christina Ricci and, and uh Angelica Houston and him. Anyway, but no, uh, the story that I enjoy the most, and of course you have to read it to get the full details, but Walter Koenig and his autobiography Warp Factors, because they, they, they lived together for a while mm -hmm. when they were both struggling actors at the Playhouse, the, the actor school. And he said that he was all excited when um, you know, uh, Christopher Lloyd got cast in Star Trek 3. And he said, I, I went to meet him and and I was going to talk to him, and he was in character. He was saying, "I'm working on something else," 
and it was Doc Brown. And he goes, but I didn't know. I didn't know he was doing a character. And he didn't tell me he was doing a character until I finally thought, oh, he's he's developed some sort of problem. He's he's on drugs or something. And and he said, oh, no, no, I'm just working on a character, and I'm trying to figure out how people would actually react to this character. And so I'm doing it just to see how people react. And he said, yeah, it was, but it was so weird to see him when he was doing that, when he was workshopping. And he goes, nobody knew what that was yet. So Emmett Brown, Dr. Emmett Brown, fantastic character. I And then I forget, going back, they actually never explain why he and Marty are friends. There's no delving into it at all. But, and, 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 I thought I he worked that, for him. I I, that, I, it doesn't say that in any of the movies. No, in he just asked him to show up to record to document it. That's all it is. It's how it he meet me and then he, the they mom. clearly oh. hang out. They're clearly friends, but it never explains any of it. Which... I, I think goes to your point, though, Joe, in an, another way that the reason that works, so, the movie works so well is you just buy that these characters are who they are. Like yeah. every character. Uh, um, why am I blanking on the actor that plays his father? Oh, oh Crispin Glover. Crispin Glover. I, I know there was the issues for the sequels. But Crispin, Crispin Glover, Glover is perfectly cast in that movie. too. Perfect. And you believe he could be his father. You Who believe is also that, a great nerd. Yeah. And all of it just works. It works. just, and you believe it. You believe, you watch it, and there is nothing in that film as outlandish as parts are that I'm like, oh, this is taking me completely out of it. This is unbelievable. I mean, it just, these characters work and the actors that do them work, and Doc Brown's one of them. It's just, yeah. 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 All right, gentlemen. I think we should probably save our honorable mentions for next episode, correct? Oh, yeah. yes. Yes. Uh, by the so, way, Joe, you know my favorite uh, back because to the nerds are so important. We deserve a part two, um, or part three, part seven, if there's enough people that like this episode. Joe, uh, by the way, you know my favorite, cons- or not my favorite. There's a ton of conspiracies to your point about why are they friends. One of my f- one of the ones I read recently is they're, they're friends because Doc Brown is actually Marty from the future. Hmm. And it's it's a it's a, it, a because uh. The, the paradox where they each see each other and all of that stuff, the way he resolves it is to make sure time doesn't unravel. He goes back in time and sets himself up to meet Marty when he's younger to guide him as a sort of time traveling Obi-Wan. Hmm. Interesting. Right. I don't necessarily buy it, but I'm like, I'll give people credit for doing the homework. That's a lot of work. All right. Yeah. So if you will listen to this episode, please come to our live showing at Scarefest coming up Scarefest 6 p.m. Bonehead Weekly in the main in the main uh, <clears throat> panel room. We'll be doing our live show with a guest and you can tell us why you think you're the biggest nerd and we will give you a shout out because we're probably going to, I haven't talked to the other two, but I don't imagine we'll be dropping an episode next week because we'll be in the right in the middle. Well, I'll be right in the middle of Scarefest and these two will be too for most of it. So probably won't get a chance to do an episode next week and we'll also be recording live at Scarefest. So let us know who it is or why you should be the biggest nerd, right, James? And then we'll give yes, you, a, yeah. we'll talk to you. We'll get, we'll say, this is the reason why this person is the biggest nerd on the show. Yes. And, and, and just don't interrupt our panel to do that. Yeah. You know, no. if, if we're, if we've got a guest, please don't interrupt our panel, yeah. but please do talk to us after the show. I mean, in before person, and after we are not hard to find. I, we're fairly, yeah. uh, the other two are introverts, but we'll talk, we'll, we'll get them to talk to you. Yeah, I mean, you if know, I, we, I, I'm clearly referring to myself now as three people. Mm. Hmm. Huh. Cloning. Yeah. yeah. All right. This has been Bonehead Weekly. Uh-huh.